Hey Ventra, did you know that Singapore has about 200 kilometers of coastline? In some special stretch, the intertidal zone, there's a treasure trove of wildlife sightings that not many know about. After watching this video, the secret of the intertidal zone will be yours. Then you will be on your own tide walking adventure. The intertidal zone is a transitional area that's submerged in high tide and exposed in low tide. If you haven't been here at low tide, I guarantee you'll find something new. You can use the timestamps in the description below to skip to how you can plan your own intertidal walk. Otherwise, here are some of the fascinating sights from my previous walk at Changi Beach during the hottest supermoon low tide. This one to eat? Uh, no, cannot eat. <laughs> Not nice to eat also. What is it? It's a sea urchin. Oh, a sea urchin. The sea urchin can eat, right? The, the oh, what's it called? This, this kind cannot. Uh, uh, uni. No, I think they have been like bleached already. Oh, but why? No, no, these are what? white sea urchins. Oh. Why are you guys collecting it then? Oh, no, so, Research, uh, No, he's just uh, collecting to look for some detail in the back. Ah, okay. okay. Wait, you're from <laughs> National Parks? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we encourage everyone to return, like you can observe like in the hill, but not for too long. Encourage them to put it back. <laughs> oh, that's oh, a big one! Oh, hermit crab! Mm. Wow. Uh. What are you guys searching for now? I was searching for sand dollars. Oh! Mm. Money? <laughs> <laughs> it's a round... Oh. Uh, it's an animal. What? It's an animal? Yes. So like the, the bottom of it is where the mouth is. This is the underside of it. Oh, oh. Yeah. then it has small hair uh. for it to move around the ground. Uh. But it's bulky. Check this out. Seafood bucket. <laughs> Locally made. Support local, guys. Uh, seriously? Support local. To help you plan your own intertidal adventure, I have come up with a step-by-step -step guide. In this example, we will use Changi Beach as our target location. So firstly, we will need to find the right time to go. We need to know when there will be a period of low tide that's preferably below 0.2 meters. This is so that we can see a significant portion of the intertidal zone while also having enough time to explore before the tide comes back. We can consult a tide table for our target location, in this case, Changi Beach. For me, I found this tide table from Tides for Fishing website. The tide table tells us the forecasted tide levels at the shore at different timings. In Singapore, the coasts are near enough to each other, so the measurements here should be accurate enough. The tides will be more drastic in full moons and new moons, so the most lowest lowest tides will be within those periods. Okay, but rather than sifting through all the timings from this table uh, in the different months, I've pulled all the data and filtered the suitable dates especially for you. So please leave me a like and subscribe if you find this helpful. To use this table, just go to my website, look at the table that's showing dates below 0.2 meter. For example, if the 30th of September is a good time for you, the lowest height will be at 0.2 meters which will be at 8.03 p.m. The sun would have set at 6.57, so it will be dark by then. It would be good to reach the Changi Beach at least 30 minutes before the lowest tide, so about 7.30 p.m. This is so that you can have more time to explore the lower regions. Number two, come with the right gear. I highly recommend wearing high ankle water footwear, such as these high ankle boots, 
because when we wore the short ankle once, it isn't as protective. We felt like the sand and everything was coming into our ankles. It's also good to wear long socks and long pants in case there are any enthusiastic bugs that are hungry and attracted to your lower legs. If you're going in the day, shades and cap will be essential to survive longer under the sun. Also can't go wrong if you have some sunblock. If you're going at night, having a light source is essential, such as a torchlight or a headlight. Headlight is preferred because you want to look around for the good stuff. Do not rely on your phone torchlight because it definitely will not be enough. Also, make sure you have enough water for drinking. Because, you know, seawater is not for drinking. It's only for seeing. Another good to have will be a set of clothes for changing after the walk. I've included some affiliate links in the description below if you are looking to buy some new gear. Number 3. So, you need to be sure which coastline actually have some life to see. Not all intertidal zones are teeming with life. So if you go to the wrong place, then you might just end up wasting time. Because if you were to find the right place, you might already miss out the low tide time window. For Singapore spots, I can confirm that Changi Beach intertidal hotspot is along this stretch. Do not go to the southeastern side because I went and it was terrible. Firstly, the terrain was just wrong. We went down a very slippery wave breaker, which I didn't do, I do not recommend. And then we got our feet stuck on super soft sand, which I also do not recommend. Overall, we saw zero intertidal light. One time, I thought I saw something, but when I get closer, <sighs> it's just plastic bags. From the sources that I found, there's also these few other places that you can check out. Like the Tanamera Shores, the Pasir Ris Mangroves, and Chek Jawa Flats at Pulau Ubin. Bonus activity! After an early morning walk or before your evening walk, hit up Changi Village Hawker Centre. They've got a great selection of local food. And here are some precautions. If you are not sure whether you can touch something, don't. General rule is don't touch anything. But I know that touching things is the way we explore our environment. Just beware that even the harmless looking sea cucumber, I read that they can expulse toxic substance when they feel threatened, which can blind you. We met this lady who was confidently touching things and introducing them to her companions. So I asked her, how do you know what is safe to touch? So clear ones, try not to. Okay. I mean, you still have 10 fingers, so I think I'll trust <laughs> If you see fish, don't touch. Because the fishes here are mostly quite venomous. Uh, they might have venomous spikes. Okay. Yeah. So if you have spikes, don't touch. Yeah. Also, be careful where you step. As much as possible, avoid trampling on our tidal critters. There might also be human trash all around. If you can reach it, try to dispose it. No one will thank you for clearing it. But it's something good that you are doing for our environment. Well, I will thank you for it. Thanks. I had a lot of fun discovering the weird alien creatures firsthand. I super recommend it if you have never done it before. It's a very accessible, adventurous activity suitable for friends, families, and couples. So, man, listen up. Actually, this is a very cheap date idea. So, leave a comment when and where you are planning to go. Please like and subscribe before you go. The text-based guide is in my blog, I've linked it in the description below. And I'll see you next time. Go walk some tight. Go, go, go.